If you're struggling to bring data into your database, then you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can import data and make sure that you don't have any duplicate entries. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely swing by our website. Don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in the Airtable database world. But without further ado, let's just jump into this topic and we are talking about importing data. So the big thing here is that we already established the structure in our database. As a general rule, you don't want to start importing data until you've already built the framework for that data, right? So this is just my own two cents. There are a number of ways that you can do it, but I prefer to start from here, get all of the things lined up and then bring the data in. So let's just jump into my screen here and take a look at how I've set this up. Now you'll notice that I have a few different fields. It's a fairly simple table. It's, it's just a single table database. And I have a full name formula, a first name, a last name text field, an email field, uh, an age formula, and then a birthday date. So basically we are going to imagine that we are importing a large set of data and just bringing it in here. So I have created a set of that data here and you'll see that I've got first name, last name, email address, and date of birth. Now if we you know, kind of put this underneath our other tables, you see that first name, last name, email already exist. Of course, we have birthday slash date of birth, different names here, but same data. The two fields that we don't have in our spreadsheet are full name and age. And this is intentional. And this is the first thing about importing new data into Airtable. We will never ever import data into what we call a dependent field. So quick pause here. There are two types of fields from a you know from a, the big umbrella so fields are columns in Airtable and they're they're basically boiled into two major categories the first one is independent data or fields the second one is dependent data or fields dependent data or fields will always derive its value from other things going on inside of your database I've talked about this at length in some other videos before, but in short, they include formula, lookup, rollup, auto number, and I'm sure three or four other ones that I'm just not thinking of off the top of my head. But basically, all of the values for these dependent field types are derived based on something else that's happening inside of your database. So in our particular case, we have the full name formula and we have the age formula. The age formula is gonna derive its value based on the birthday that's entered, right? So let's suppose, for example, that we flipped in here and we just put a birthday in. Uh, let's go with 2000, for example. We give Airtable a moment to think, this age formula is calculating based on the birthday that we enter, right? So if we took a look at this formula, we would see that it's saying, hey, we're, we're taking a difference in years between today's date and the birthday that was entered for this record. And then it outputs that number of years, right? So again, we will never write data to a dependent field. It will always be deriving its value from other inputs. Same thing with name here. So if I put my own you know, uh, information in here, give Airtable again, just give it a moment to think, and that full name will be filled out because similarly, this is deriving its value from that. This is a very important first thing that we need to kind of wrap our heads around when we're starting to import data because we will never import data to a dependent field. The other type of field is the independent field type. That includes things like text, number, dates, uh, email fields, phone number fields. You've got a long list of different types of fields that are available to you. The vast majority of them are independent, which means that we write data directly to that field. So remember, it's really one or the other when it comes to fields in Airtable. Quick pause here to give a shout to our sponsors at stacker.app. Stacker has built an amazing portal for you to create a user interface for your Airtable data so that external or internal users can log in see and interact with the data in your Airtable database 
but only get access to the exact pieces that you want them to have access to. They can read only, they can edit specific fields, and they can create new records as needed. If that's of interest, swing on by stacker.app and don't forget to use discount GAP15 to get 15% off. Now, if I was to import just a very small amount of data, truth be told, I would probably just do this in a simple copy paste. So let me flip back to my Excel document here. I've got my first name, last name, email, date of birth. The first thing I wanna do if I'm just gonna import, like let's say five records at a time, I would uh, go ahead and organize my view so that I could import that data. And so I would create a new view as I've done here. I would probably name it something along the lines of import. And I'm going to hide all of those dependent fields. In this case, age, I will hide. I also wanna line up my fields and make sure that they're not out of whack. I want them to match exactly with that uh, CSV or Excel file. So I want first name, last name, email address, then birthday. And that is the order that we have here. So if you needed to you know, move some of these things around, you can just click drag these columns and get them situated. Now you'll notice that I can't hide this leftmost field. This leftmost field is called our primary field. It's uh, the most valuable or the most important of all of the fields or columns inside of every one of your tables. And it is the, uh, the identifier that will basically tell you what kind of information you have for that particular record. I can't hide it, but that's okay. I will just start with the second column and I'll just kind of ignore this column as I do some imports. So flipping back into Excel, let's say I just wanted to import, I don't know, the first five of these, right? One thing uh, that I would need to do before I do any copying and pasting, now that I've already lined everything up, the last step is I need to make sure that the data type matches the, the data that I would be bringing in. So for example, in this case, I have my date format to be the US local, which is month, day, year. If I accidentally had it in something like the European uh, date format, then I tried to bring in data you'll notice that I'm gonna run into a bit of a snag. Let me just grab that, uh, just some dates really quickly. Just grab a little snip of five dates here and I'll paste these in. Airtable's gonna prompt you and say, do you want to expand the table to get these extra records in? I will say yes or continue. And you'll notice that only one of those dates came in. Why is that? So I grabbed these five that are still highlighted here and only one of them came in and this date was written in the US date, which is uh, the date format, which is month, day, year. And I'm trying to transfer it into a European format, which is day, month, year. And so what this is June 5th, but if you know we transpose that, it's gonna look like May 6th, right? And you'll see that it was it was written in in the same format that I pasted it in, even though this is taking the format in day, month, year. The reason that these other ones didn't take any data is because if I flip back to my Excel file, these five, with the exception of the middle one, all have numbers in their day field that is greater than 12. And so when I try to, you know, Airtable gets confused and it says, well, hold on a second, you're giving me month, day, year, but you're filling it into day, month, year. And so there is no month that is greater than month 12. And so it can't do anything with that data. So that's why you'll notice that I have two blanks, then one came through incorrectly, and then two more blanks. Long story short here, folks, make sure that your, your fields are set up to accept the same format that you're putting into them. So I need to make that change here, turn that to local, in my case, that would be month, day, year. And now you're gonna notice that, of course, this, you know, this birthday was put in incorrectly. If I grab those again and try to paste them again, now they will go in just fine. So make sure that your formats are correct and make sure that your fields or columns are lined up appropriately. And once we have that, we can just grab a section of data. Let's say I'm grabbing these 10 records right here and I can just paste. Again, I'm gonna ignore the leftmost column because that's a dependent field. And I'm going to just start right here. I'm gonna hit Control V or Apple V to paste. Yes to expand the table and it's gonna overwrite all that data. So there we go. All of that just went in nicely and easily. That is full transparency, exactly how I would do this if I had 
10 or 20 records that I just needed to really quickly get in there. But the best way, the proper way to bring data into your database is to actually use one of the blocks called the CSV import block. And I'll show you why it's so valuable. It actually allows us to remove duplications at the time of import. So let's go ahead and pop open a block. Of course, this does require that you're on a pro Airtable plan. I'm going to install the block. And if you just type CSV or CS, you'll notice that it's one of the first things that pops up. I will install this and give it just a second. And it's going to be ready for me to drop in that block. Now, the great part about doing the CSV import block is you don't have to worry about re you know, negotiating how your table is set up. Your fields don't have to get uh, removed or, or reorganized or reordered. Everything can just be dropped straight in. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is, of course, take that Excel file and make sure that you save a CSV version of it. So if you're in a regular Excel file, you'll need to do a save as and make sure to save it as a comma delimited or CSV file. And in this case, I've just saved it to my desktop as CSV import example, and you see it living down here. So I can go ahead and just close out that CSV, and I'm gonna drag that file in and just drop it right there. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it automatically mapped two fields. And the reason for that is I had these fields, these fields have headers on them. Uh, let me open that file up one more time and, and we'll take a look at it one more time. And so my fields have headers. I've got a first name, last name, email address, and remember DOB for date of birth here. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, Airtable automatically takes my first name and last name, and it knows that those fields match. It knows that this header, this first name is gonna match the first name field in Airtable because it matches exactly in terms of context. It spelled exactly the same and everything. So if your CSV import matches your Airtable exactly, perfect. If it does not, then you're going to need to map it yourself. In this case, I've got email address as a header, but in my Airtable database, it's called email. So what I would need to do is say, yes, I actually do want to import that email field, except I need to tell it which CSV uh, column that is, in this case, email address. And then lastly, the other field here is date of birth. And in my database, it's called birthday. So I just need to say, yes, I do want to import this as well. And I have it labeled as DOB in my, uh, my uh, CSV file. So now we've got everything properly mapped. You'll also notice that I have this turned on at first row of CSV is headers. Airtable's block is very intuitive and it knew that automatically, but you might need to manually override that yourself. Now, the last thing here is I don't want to create duplicate records, right? And so, for example, you know that I've already imported uh, just like a section of like 10 of the, the first 10 names. So if I were to import all 50 of these, my first 10 would be duplications. In fact, I know that I only want to import 40, but you don't necessarily always know exactly how many duplications you have. And it takes some time if you have to go in and clean up that data. So avoid that and use the merge with existing records function here. And so what I'm going to tell Airtable is I want you to merge these fields or mer only bring in the data that does not already exist in Airtable. So it says that the CSV row will be merged if it matches the following field. Unfortunately, we can only pick one field. So pick a field that gives you uh, without any, you know, without any concern, you know that there's a duplication. In this case, I'll pick email, right? Because many people could have the same first name or last name or birthday, but email is always unique. So once I pick this, you'll notice up here that it says only 40 records will now be created. Even though I have 50 new records in my CSV file, the first 10 of them are going to be skipped entirely because it knows they already exist. So let me go ahead and once I'm done, I go to the bottom right corner and I hit save records. And as soon as I do that, Airtable takes a moment and it imports all of that data. So there we go. All in, we have 51 records because I did create one manually from, uh, you know, by hand at the beginning. And then we have the 10 that we brought in ourselves just using a quick copy paste. And then the remaining 40 were brought in that way. Again, the nice part about that CSV import block is that you don't have to organize your uh, columns or fields appropriately. So I could have everything you know, mix matched. And when I drag into that CSV import, 
mapping it is just as easy as what you saw here. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon. 